So in our previous video, we have added this beautiful CSS animation to our list page. And this data appearing on our list page is defined in its component only. This property field contains the required data in an array form here. But in real world, usually data located in any database and an API expose some methods to access that data. And a service is defined to call API methods using HTTP request. And a component calls the methods defined in that service to get the data from API. We are not going to create an API at this stage, but we can easily replicate this behavior without an API just by putting our data in our separate JSON file and then call this JSON file using HTTP calls. Let's look how we can do that. Add a new folder at the app level where the asset folder is located. Name it data and add a new file. Give it a name uh, properties.json. Copy all the data from our component uh, including this square bracket. and paste it here in our JSON file. Now in our component, remove this equal operator. Uh, we will populate it with the data we have placed in JSON file using HTTP calls. So to enable HTTP calls in our application, uh, we need to import HTTP client module, which provides the required methods uh, to make HTTP calls. So go to our app.module file and import it from at angular slash common slash http. In this module, we have http client module, uh, which configure the dependency injector for http client that provide the methods for http requests. We need to import it here or to use http service in our application. Now we are ready to inject http client in our property list component. We can add it here in our constructor and uh, Angular will automatically create the instance of this HTTP client class at runtime and inject it here in our component. This is called dependency injection uh, that Angular provides out of the box. Now we can access the method of HTTP client using this dot HTTP and here we get a list of uh, supported method we can use. Most of the time we use either get or post out of these methods. So as we need to fetch the data from our JSON file and we do not need to post anything, uh, we will use get method. It has 15 overloads. Few of those are deprecated as well. In the get method, we need to pass the mandatory parameter and that is URL that will return the data. This URL can be any API URL uh, that returns a JSON object. So in our case, uh, we can pass the URL of our JSON file as parameter here. Other parameter is optional in get method. But if we will run our application, Angular will not execute this get method. I will let you know shortly. But before that, let's verify if our HTTP request is executed or not. Press F12 uh, to open this developer tool. Clear the request by pressing this button and refresh the page. All HTTP requests executed by HTTP client are displayed here in XHR tab. You can see there is no such request that is calling our JSON file. And the reason for that is this get method return an observable. Observables are the mechanism to pass the data between different parts of our application and the recommended technique in Angular to get the data in asynchronous calls. Observable functions are not executed until a consumer subscribe to it. As our get method has no subscriber, this method is not executed. Uh, we can use subscribe method to receive the response returned by get method like this. Here we can get the response in data. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. Let's just print the data in console and uh, run our application. But it's giving error. Fail to load resources. 
and the reason is angular is not able to access our data folder because we have not defined it here in our assets so any folder uh, which is outside of the app folder and we need to access that in our application we have to add here in assets array in angular.json file but still it will not work because this angular.json is loaded at the time of starting of our application. So we will have to stop our application and restart it using ng-serve. Now you can see our data is printed in console and in the network tab we can see our HTTP request in XHR tab here. And here in header tab you can verify the request URL. Now we can assign this data to our property variable, add curly braces and to add multiple statement in this function and set this dot property equals data. We are getting an error because the type we have defined here is an array and that is not assignable to an object type that we are getting in response data. For now, let's take the benefit of any type, but this is not the recommended approach. Uh, we will change it back to an array in our next video and see how to map response data to any other data type. But for now, it is fine to use any uh, for property variable. Perfect. Our application is now getting data using HTTP calls and started to display the list page again. But what if some other components also need to fetch the properties data and share the data between multiple components? In such cases, it is extremely useful to use a service. Angular provides an option to create services uh, that can be injected in various components using dependency injections. Angular services are singleton object that get instantiated only once during the lifecycle of an application. The main objective of a service is to organize and share business logic, data and function with different components of an Angular application. Let's create our first service and create a function to fetch this property data in that service next. Create a service folder under the app folder. Uh, this is not mandatory to create this folder under the app only. It is just up to you where you would like a service to be placed. Usually as a best practice, if a service belongs specific to any group of component, better to keep that under the same folder. As I would like to share this uh, service between multiple components, I am creating this service folder just below the app folder. To create the service, you can write complete code manually. But Angular CLI already uh, provides commands to create a service and add the necessary boilerplate code in that file. If you are following my tutorial uh, since the start and you have installed all the suggested extensions, you may generate service by selecting this menu from the context menu. But I would like to create this using the Angular CLI command because maybe most of students may have not loaded this extension. First of all, change the directory uh, where you would like to create your service and run ngg service and your service name. I would like to call it housing and look these two files are added in service folder as mentioned many times this stacks file belongs to the testing we are not going to use testing in this uh, tutorial and this housing.service.ts file is where we will add our methods uh, to be shared between components let's take a look at this file services are recommended to be decorated with at injectable decorator and using this provided in property, we tells Angular that in which ng module we are registering this service. Here root means we want to provide this service at app root level. And as app module is the root level class of our application, we need to register it here in the providers array. So this is automatically imported here at the top of our class by VS Code. When you provide the service at root level, Angular creates a single shared instance of service, meaning it is available for whole application. Now we will move all the code required to fetch the property data from our property list component to service. 
move this HTTP client import statement. Move this line as well from our component constructor to our service constructor and create a new method here that we can call from our component. Let's name it get all properties as this method is going to fetch all properties. Copy this HTTP get statement from our component. Just copy this get part and paste it in service method. Use return before this statement as this function is going to return some data. So this get method is returning an observable. Now we can use this method in our property list component. Let's remove this import statement as it is no longer needed here. And here in place of HTTP client, now we will inject our service. Let's name it housing service, colon housing service. Make sure this service is imported at the top. Sometimes it is not imported automatically in VS code. And comment this code and use housing service dot and we'll get all the methods defined in our service. As this method returns observable, uh, we need to use subscribe method and we can get the response returned by our service here in subscribe method. Let's copy this code and uncomment it. Save it and uh, look if our application works. Perfect. Now our listing page is populating data from our service. Let's remove this code. We have covered the positive cases of API uh, means we have assumed that everything works fine in API. But in real world, it is very hard that everything keeps uh, working fine always. There are negative cases as well. Uh, it may happen that our database is down and API request failed to return data. It may also happen that API server is down at the time we are calling it from our service. So uh, we should handle negative cases as well. So in the subscribe, uh, first callback is to get the result. And second callback is to log error uh, if there is any error. And the third callback is to log completion. Let's use a second callback to log the error and just print the error in console. We will look at error handling in detail uh, when we will work on API. But for now, it is good enough to understand the basic things. So if we look at the topics, we have covered these topics till now. Next, we will look how to map HTTP response to another type of object and uh, return that as response in a service. Then we will understand routing. See you in next video. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. If you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe the same and press the bell icon to get the alerts as soon as I upload the new video. Ta-da! Bye-bye.